In the parasternal short axis view, there are multiple different levels we can look at. In this lecture, we're going to focus on the aortic valve level. Okay. In the upcoming lectures, we'll look at the other levels that we can see and the structures and why we assess different and what we can assess at those different levels. Okay. So the parasternal long axis view we looked at previously. Now we're at the per parasternal short axis view. And then within this view, we are going to do different maneuvers by tilting the transducer in order to look at different levels. Okay. Uh, so what you want to do, okay, if you recall that the transducer um, is placed at the left sternal edge at the third or fourth intercostal space, okay, so you can imagine the transducer is right here, and in the parasternal long axis view, we had it positioned towards the patient's right shoulder. So this is the right shoulder, this is the left shoulder, okay, imagine this is the patient here, Okay, not doing the patient justice, but imagine they are looking at you lying on the bed, the right side. Okay, so this was the parasternal long axis view. Now we're looking at the parasternal short axis view. And specifically, we're looking at the aortic valve level. So in the parasternal short axis view, as you can see, there's different levels or different views we can have. And what, how it determines uh, the different views are based on the tilt. So from the parasternal long axis view, you have the transducer, the marker directed towards the right shoulder. What I would want you to do is then rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. So you'd go in this direction, okay? And so from this point to here, and you would do it 90 degrees. So you'd simply keep it in the same location, the left sternal edge, around the third or fourth intercostal space, and then simply rotate 90 degrees clockwise to the patient's left shoulder. Okay, so now we're at the patient's left shoulder, about two o'clock, and you want to, in the aortic valve level, tilt it towards the patient's right shoulder. So the marker is directed this way, but you're going to either, t you can do different tilts that give you the different views in the short axis view. Okay, so hopefully it makes sense so far. So what we've done is we've rotated the, the marker from the patient's right shoulder to the left shoulder. So pretty much 90 degrees clockwise rotation, same place of where it is marked, the left sternal edge between the third and fourth intercostal space. And again, I, can, I said you can have these different levels, okay? And what you wanna know is that you can either tilt this transducer towards the patient's right shoulder or away from it. If you tilt it towards the patient's right shoulder, you can get more apical views. Okay, if you tilt it away from the patient's uh, shoulder, then you get more basal views. Okay, and why you can kind of try to think of holding the transducer and moving it in those positions. Remember, the apex of the heart would be down here, and the more basal portion would be here. Okay, so if you imagine tilting it away towards the patient's left hip, you're going to see more basal uh, portions of the heart. And then if you go towards the patient's right shoulder, then you'll have more apical. Now at the aortic valve level, we want to have more basal uh, views, okay? And in this case, we're gonna tilt it away from the patient's right shoulder, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Again, the depth can be about 12 to 16 centimeters. So what can we actually see in this view, right? So here we have our two, three different layouts that I've put here to hopefully help you see it in different ways. It helps me to visualize things in different manners to help understand where these structures are located. So if you imagine the transducers here, okay, is this one here. This is the marker, the one in yellow. Again, imagine the transducers here in these images. And then this one here is the marker. The yellow is the marker. And what you have here is the right ventricle is this RV, okay? And you can see it here in this structure is the RV, okay? That would be this one here. So this one is not labeled. And then this one is the labeled one, okay? Just so you can see both of them. These two are the same image. So you have the right ventricle, and then you have the right atrium, which is this one here. And then between the right atrium and the right ventricle, you have the tricuspid valve, which is this here. So this is your tricuspid valve, so TV. And then you have the right ventricular outflow tract and the pulmonary vein, 
Okay, so here's the pulmonary vein, which would, uh, or pulmonary valve, excuse me, pulmonic valve. And then from the pulmonic valve, you have the main pulmonary artery. Okay, so this would be MPA or main pulmonary artery, which you can see here. Okay, so whichever view uh, you like, sometimes seeing them, all of these views are helpful. Now notice more posteriorly in the uh, back portion of the lower image, okay, you can see this here, which is the left atrium. Here's your left atrium and so forth. And between the right and left atrium, you have the interatrial septum, this portion here. Okay, that's this here, and it's marked there. So hopefully you're kind of seeing all these structures sur surrounded. So, so far we've seen the left atrium, the left, uh, the left uh, ventricle. Um, actually, we saw the right ventricle. Okay. Uh, we also saw the uh, right ventricular outflow tract, which is this one here in the main pulmonary artery. So hopefully uh, that makes sense so far, okay? Now the valves that you could see are, we saw the tricuspid valve, okay? You can see the motion of it in the pulmonic valve. You can also uh, see the uh, aortic valve, and that's the main one I want you to notice. So let me erase this here, and notice that in the center, you have the aortic valve. Okay, right in the middle of this image, this one here is the aortic valve. And of the aortic valve, you can see the opening, you can see calcification of it, and the three leaflets of it, okay? Normally, the aortic valve has three leaflets. This one up here is the right coronary cusp. And then you can see the left coronary cusp and the non-coronary cusp, okay? labeled here too in the middle. So this middle portion is that aortic valve that you're seeing. Okay, so again, when the transducer is on the top of the heart, you're seeing the most anterior portion, which is the right ventricle here. You have the right atrium, the tricuspid valve, you have the pulmonic valve, the main pulmonary artery, and the left atrium, interatrial septum, and the one right in the middle is the aortic valve. Okay, so let me take that off so you can view that again without any of my markings on it. So hopefully that makes sense. Keep looking uh, over that again, just so this image really sticks in your mind. All right, so let's review what we discussed before we end here. Okay, so the position of the uh, transducer in this in the parasternal short axis view is the same position that you had in the parasternal long axis view, okay? But what you're doing now is from that parasternal long axis view, which is often the first view that we look at, we rotate the uh, transducer 90 degrees clockwise towards the patient's left shoulder, okay? So notice it's going towards the left shoulder. And remember, now we want to tilt it away from the patient's right shoulder in order to see uh, more of the basal view. So away, basal, we're looking at the aortic valve, okay? Now we'll see in upcoming views, we'll start to tilt it towards the patient's right shoulder and it'll allow us to look at more apical views, okay? The depth, about 12 to 16 centimeters, you can adjust based on the patient. Uh, remember the assessment that we looked at, we went through all these valves. We saw the aortic valve sitting in the middle. We saw the tricuspid valve, which was this one in the pulmonic valve, okay? We can look at the motion regurgitation of those valves. We can look at the opening and closing if there's any calcification, as well as those, uh, the three cusps that are normally associated with the aortic valve, okay? We saw the right atrium, we saw the right ventricle, the left atrium, the main pulmonary artery, and the interatrial septum as well. Okay, so hopefully this is all making sense. Again, keep reviewing these images, try to quiz yourself, uh, and it'll slowly come together. And most importantly, practice on a patient, okay? So while we have these videos, the most important thing is to be able to practice and perform this at the bedside. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100 
more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book. Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay, a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay, you can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay, and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.